is the moment where you have to ruffle everything, which takes ages. Bonjour. Are you ready to dive into a world of whimsy, fashion, and a little bit of nostalgia? That's right, it's Barbie, <laughs> again. You might be thinking that Barbie is more about glitz and glamour and plastic. Well, yeah. But for once, I am not adding sparkles and I'm going more in the direction of cottage core and picnic in the country. And I need something to wear to go see the Barbie movie with my friends. I already made the perfect handbag. See, I was planning to make this outfit, which is very, very nice and it seemed very comfortable for the summer heat. So I went to my local fabric store and they had a clearance on the perfect gingham fabric. Ging gingham? 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 I don't know. So I got more than needed and now I have enough to make a fluffy, frilly dress and I'm thinking silky again. So let's make this Barbie outfit with a slight cottage core twist. Let's make it into two pieces so I have more option to wear it with different styles and pockets. Because even in the whimsy world of Barbie, we don't compromise on practicality. And also I can sneak snacks in the movie theater. Allegedly. And I will complete the ensemble with a bow or a hat that should look like you are stepping out of a 50s pinup ad. So grab your favorite sewing tools and sprinkle some pink plastic magic on your project and join me on this fabulous journey. I hope you will like it and make your own. Let's just all go to the movies as Barbies. I went to see Star Wars dressed as a Jedi, so let's just do the same here. Because this will be so much fun. Come on. <laughs> Allez, let's get to work. First of all, can we appreciate? Fabric is clean, I just need to press it, all six meters of it. Mm. I think it's the perfect weight for this dress. It's not too heavy, but also not like the chiffon that I use for the cloud dress. It doesn't fray that much, so this will be nice for sewing. Now with all of this, I also have this that I forgot when I did the cloud dress. This is a big ruffle that I had made for a petticoat and I ended up scrapping it. So I think now I can use that to make a petticoat underneath that. Also make the outfit into two pieces, so I have more chance to wear them. Let's go! I think the shape is pretty good. It fits well. I'm just going to make the neckline a bit lower, just so I have a slightly curved shape. But otherwise, I think it's good. I might make it a bit shorter, but I can see that after I finish the rest. For once, I have plenty of fabric, so I'm cutting the top in the bias. I hope it will make it more interesting. I think this print will look very nice in the bias. Also, this fabric is so easy to sew after all the velvet and the hair from the last project. Sometimes it just feels so good to go the easy route. But still, with this light fabric, I need a little bit more strength. So I'm adding a fusible interfacing onto the straps. It's super easy to use, but pro tip, never let this thing touch your iron on either side. The straps are just a long rectangle that I'm folding in half. My favorite tool for turning the straps is to use this. I did not know what it was, but someone in the comments said that it is uh, used for knitting. This is a super big uh, safety needle. It's very long, so it's perfect for turning the straps. I'm also adding a simple cotton lining. It will give enough structure to the fabric, especially in the bias. It's an old bed sheet again. <laughs> and you can see that I added also a little bit of interfacing right there at the front. This will give a little bit more strength for the button and the button holes. Maybe I should make it higher. So if I have the skirt like this, I don't know. What do you think? A oh, four? Okay. Today's video is sponsored by Kitsch. They are a women-owned business about to upgrade your shower experience. I know you are shocked that French people take showers, but 
It's true. Let's dive into the topic of bottle-free beauty. As someone who is always on the lookout for products to reduce plastic waste, I am super excited to share kids shampoo and conditioner bars with you. These little wonders are not only good for the environment, they are also great for your hair. Now, my hair is quite long and I usually wash it about once a week. Ish. So with these bars, I am set up for at least three to four months. Plus, kids bars are vegan, cruelty-free and they don't contain any sulfate, parabens or phthalates. Fla flat a pass. Phthalat flat <laughs> Phthalats. Phthalats. I personally have the rice conditioner bars because they are fantastic for strengthening and smoothing my curly hair. And the scent of these bars with essential oils is simply delightful. It's subtle, but it's very pleasant. It does smell really good. <laughs> oh, well, let's not forget about the caddy that comes with these bars. It's practical, allowing everything to drain through, preventing any melting or soggy bars. And let's be real, it looks pretty good and it takes less space too. But that's not all, my friends. I also got my hands on kitsch satin pillow cases. These are great for avoiding frizz at night. If you are intrigued and want to try Kitsch for yourself, you can use my special link in the description and my exclusive code to get 25% off your first order. And they have a subscription option for even better discounts. They ship internationally to the US and to 27 other countries. A huge thank you to Kitsch for sponsoring this video and now let's back to work. The neckline is finished with a row of stitching very close to the edge. This is on the inside and it will keep the lining from poking out and being visible. Then you clip the corners and push them out using something pointy but not too much. Then the bottom edge is clipped because it's curved, folded and pressed. This makes it very easy to sew by machine. You can also close this by hand if you don't want any visible stitching on the outside. Time to choose. Hmm. I like the two holes, but they are too yellow and these ones are too big, so let's go. I'm not good at button holes, but this machine is supposed to be automatic, so let's do some testing. That was so easy. Let's go! Ah. that how well it worked and it was so easy it took like five minutes i'm adding buttons everywhere for now i've put on the top and i'm just trying with this old petticoat to see if it's the right length hmm. No, it's too short. I don't want it to the floor, but maybe... That's on. Yeah. I think this is better. Nice. I'm just going to make the quickest petticoat possible because I really want to start with the pink fabric. So we need bed sheets. Again. I'm just gonna start with the waistband and make it slightly curved so it doesn't stay on my waist, just below it. That way I will be able to use it with a lot of different dresses. I'm making this curved shape as big as my waist with some overlap in the back to add some closure. The main part of this petticoat will be a simple circle skirt. Circle. Circle. S circle. Uh, this must be so painful for you to hear my accent all the time. I know the automatic closed caption of YouTube is really struggling with my accent. So you must be too. I'm really sorry. But I'm trying. I'm trying very hard. Ah, the second part of the waistband is pinned and closed with the machine, so it's very neat on the inside and on the outside. We have a clean belt on a circle skirt. Kind of cute. However, I need to attach the full ruffle to the skirt. That's a lot of fabric on a tiny thing. I hope it fits. Proceed. Fold it in quarters. Mark where the folds are. One, two, three, four. And now we match it on the skirt. Yeah. 
The inside edge of the ruffle is cleaned up with the serger. Very relaxing. For closure on this, now that I know how to make buttonholes, I'm going to add one. I did some intense calculations to make sure that I have enough to make the fluffiest skirt with all the fabric that I had. And that failed, but we'll see about that later. <laughs> Anyways, I ended up cutting two circles to make two layers for the skirt, but that didn't work, so I went to bed. One of the cool things with fabrics that have stripes or here, uh, uh, is that it's very easy to cut straight because you just have to follow the light with your scissors. Joining and surging those strips together to make one super long ring that I will turn into a ruffle. I hemmed one edge with a roll hem and we can press it while it's still flat before we turn it into a ruffle. I thought I had bought enough fabric, but I didn't. <laughs> so we have to make a choice. It's either sleeves or the second layer. Maybe make the top layer a little bit bigger, and then I can have the sleeves and I scrap the second layer, which is fine because I have the petticoat. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just quickly checking if the circle that I cut will be enough to make two sleeves. It should work. And two rectangles can be added to add more volume to the skirt. And also I can use them to make pockets. And now is the moment where you have to ruffle everything which takes ages. So shiny. I added some clips all around the skirt, so I have eight and also have eight on the ruffle, so I can match them and gather it and it will be distributed evenly. Gathering this takes a while because it's a very long hem, but actually it's not very difficult. You just have to be consistent, neat and tidy. After sewing it, this edge can be cleaned up with the serger. I forgot to film it, so please enjoy the scraps. Filming is hard, okay? Come on, we are almost done. The waistband is just a simple rectangle, I'm just matching it to my waist, adding interfacing and a layer of cotton, and gathering the top of the skirt to, to that such a flat. And gathering the top of the skirt to that length. I'm tired, it's hot. Waistband is attached, now I need to add a zipper. And for once I have an invisible zipper in the right color. With the zipper in place, I'm folding the waistband. Closing it by hand so it's not visible from the outside. And the last step is to make the sleeves. I'm making puffy sleeves. And my partner saw them and said, Ah oui, c'est des manches poufettes. So I will call them poufette sleeves from now on. That is a strange shape of sleeve, but I think it's as big as I can get it with the amount of fabric I have left. This is the underarm, it's finished, and now I have to gather everything here to fit above the shoulder. I need to get the elastic through the bottom of the sleeve, and for that I'm using a blunt needle. But if I get the elastic through the needle, it will be too big to get through the little channel, so I'm going to sew the elastic with the needle. Hopefully it works. This elastic goes through the bottom side of the sleeve, and I can attach this to the shoulder straps. I'm really not sure about the result of those sleeves. 
I might end up scrubbing them when I want to wear this outside in the summer. Tell me what you think, I'm really not sure about it, but it's kind of cute. I also had just enough fabric to make a little bow on a white hat, and this will finish the look.